Hi, and welcome to the Vention Assembly series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in charge of education here at Vention. In this video, we'll be taking a look at our belt conveyors from Dorner. This includes their basic setup, assembly process, as well as compatible hardware. The belt conveyor itself gets shipped partially assembled with the belt, return rollers, and drive shaft pre-installed. From here, we'll move on to see what remains for the assembly process. For the assembly, you'll need a 5mm T-handle, a 4mm, a 3mm, and a 2.5mm Allen key. The first thing that must be done prior to working on the conveyor is to assemble the vention structure that the conveyor will rest on during operation. The configuration of this is dependent on your application and can vary from project to project. Once this is complete, you can start with the assembly of the conveyor itself. First, we'll install the mounting brackets that are used to attach the conveyor to the structure itself. This is done by inserting the supplied T-bar and fastening the mounts with the M6 fasteners. For now, we'll only tighten them to figure tight. The orientation of the mounting bracket is dependent on your setup. In our case, we'll have them facing downwards. With all of the brackets mounted, you can then properly space the mounts. Once spaced, you can fix them in place and secure the conveyor to the stand using our shorter 14mm M8 fasteners. Once your conveyor is mounted, here is where you would take the motor and attach it to the motor mount at the base using the supplied M6 fasteners. For us, we'll skip this step. With the motor mounted, you should then remove the cover plate by loosening the two fasteners on either side of the mount. Next, on the side of the drive shaft of the conveyor, remove the two countersunk M6 screws from the end plate and place the motor mount over the plate. You can then re-secure it using the two longer M6 screws supplied with the assembly. Now that the mount is attached to the conveyor, we'll install the internal components. First, install the key into the keyway of the conveyor shaft and slide the drive pulley onto the shaft. Using a straight edge, ensure that the driven pulley is in line with the idler and driving pulley before tightening the set screws. Install the belt and using the idler pulley, apply enough tension to the belt so that a force of 4.5 newtons will cause the long section to deflect by three millimeters and tighten it in place. One thing to note is that the tensioner position is driven by the main direction of travel of the conveyor and should always be on the slack side of the belt. Once the driving belt has been tensioned, you can then reinstall the cover plate. At this point, you can install any side guards to your structure to complete the assembly. If you have multiple belt conveyors running end to end, an additional piece of hardware that can be used is our transfer plates. They allow for the smooth transfer of material from one conveyor to another. To install it on your conveyor, simply remove the two countersink screws on either side of the end plate of the conveyor, line up the plate, and reinstall the fasteners. If you're mounting it on the drive side of the conveyor, you would need to install the transfer plate prior to installing the motor mount. Now that we're done with the assembly, we'll take a look at the compatible hardware. For the powertrain components, the conveyor can be driven by our small, medium, or large NEMA 34 stepper servo motors. Furthermore, if you'd like to control the conveyor via digital I.O., you do have the option to drive it using our available AC motor and VFD kit. And with that, we've covered the basics of the belt conveyor. Thank you for watching this assembly video, and please do check out the other ones in the series.